of the most important steps in doing a website translation project is all of the testing and prep that goes into the project before you begin. So let's go over a couple of those points. Uh, I'm joined by Patrick Daly, one of our project managers. Patrick, talk to us a little bit about some of the first steps you go into in terms of uh, the data transfer. You know, is it a connection? Is it going to be, uh, are we going to use a plugin or are we going to use a manual connection? Yeah, so really it can work either way. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so if you do a connector, uh, we would connect into your CMS via our server, and then you can automatically push content for translation, or you can do a manual export where you kind of click a button and you export files and send those files directly to us. So both ways work just fine, it's whatever your preference would be. Great. And in terms of uh, managing that connection, um, I know one of the important points is talking about the sub-languages. If you, ex you could explain a little bit yeah. about that. So it's very important that um, you, when you do uh, establish your languages on your website, that you communicate the sub-languages, if there are any, with your provider. So English can be defined as EN, it can be EN-US, so it's very important to match exactly what that says with your provider so that they can connect seamlessly. Otherwise, there can be a lot of issues that are presented. Great, and um, once that connection is formed, um, I know one of the steps that we often follow is uh, uh, pseudo-translation. If you could explain pseudo-translation. So what we do that uh, for pseudo-translation is we take all of the content that you push over to us for translation and we turn it to all capital letters and then we send it back to you. And what that test does is then you can identify on your you know, pseudo-translated website what content has gone through for translation. If it's in all caps, then it's all good and taken care of. If it's still in lowercase, then that's a flag of hate this field or something did not come through for translation. So then what you what content you push needs to be revised to include that content. So that brings up the point of custom fields. I, I know that that process might flush that out. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, some content might not be translated. So let's talk a little bit about custom fields in terms of, um, you know, I know it's a little bit different from plugin to plugin, but what are some of the things that would be in a custom field? So custom fields typically include something like button, if you had maybe request a quote, something like that would come through, maybe a custom form, or some text that's linked to an image on your website. Those are the kind of things that will hopefully be flush out during testing, and then you can determine which custom fields, if any, you want translated. Great. If you follow those steps, you'll definitely have a successful pre-test and pre-launch on your website. Good luck with your project.